The Interstate Bridge Replacement Program is bringing awareness to how the bridge will be affected in a seismic event and why replacing it is essential, and how to encourage preparedness by sharing an animation of what could happen to the Interstate Bridge area during a magnitude 8 plus Cascadia Zone earthquake. The Interstate Bridge carrying I-5 across the Columbia River is one of only two river crossings linking Vancouver, Washington and Portland, Oregon. Over 143,000 vehicles cross the bridge each weekday. Interstate 5 is a critical connection between Oregon and Washington that supports local jobs and families and is a vital trade route for regional, national and international economies. The bridge is located near the Cascadia subduction zone, a 620 mile long fault line where the Juan de Fuca and North American tectonic plates meet, creating an area highly susceptible to earthquakes across western Oregon and Washington. With one span of the bridge over 100 years old and the other span over 60 years old, neither meet current earthquake design standards, leaving this significant connection vulnerable in the event of a major earthquake. In addition to its age, there are several elements of the existing bridge that would be vulnerable in an earthquake, mainly the foundations, which are set in sandy soil on timber piles. The shaking from an earthquake is likely to cause the soil to liquefy, resulting in movement of the entire structure and loss of support. Unfortunately, we've seen earthquake damage to other bridges with similar soil types. In a 1989 earthquake, the 53-year-old Oakland Bay Bridge lost a section of its upper deck when a portion of the bridge collapsed on the deck below. Much of the original section was built on timber piles driven into soft soil, similar to the Interstate Bridge. This structure was eventually replaced with a new, seismically resilient bridge. The Miles Glacier Bridge went into service in 1910 to support local mining activity. 57 years later, liquefaction of the loose, sandy soil induced its collapse during an earthquake. Liquefaction was the cause of the Showa Bridge collapse during a 1964 earthquake in Japan. This bridge was also founded in deep sandy soils and was similar in structure to the North Portland Harbor Bridge. Looking at Jansen Beach, we can see how both land and water crossings will be affected when an earthquake hits. At this location, the soils are also susceptible to liquefaction. And when the ground begins to shake, the material under the roadway begins to shift, causing large crevasses in the road. As we progress to the interstate bridge, the supporting soils will experience liquefaction, causing the piers to rotate in the center of the river, potentially causing a collapsing domino effect. Settling of the piers will cause the counterweights at the top of the tower to move, buckling the towers and collapsing them into the structure. If an earthquake occurs, it's highly likely it will render the bridge unusable, disrupting our vital transportation system. A Cascadia subduction zone earthquake would be a regional event disrupting shipping, rail, and commerce along the Pacific Northwest coast. It would limit access to emergency services and travel within our communities. Critical regional response needs would hamper any quick action to replace the bridge. If we wait till an event like this occurs, it would be many years before the bridge could be replaced. 